Hi everyone, I'm Rachel with Limble's product team. Today we'll be talking about how to add parts into Limble. If you're looking to add a large amount of parts into Limble at one time, check out our video about bulk importing. Without further ado, let's get going. To begin, I'm going to find the Manage Parts page by going to the Locations tab, selecting my desired location, and using the caret icon to expand my options. From the new list of options, click on Parts. Select Add a Part. Next, name your part. As a best practice, we recommend giving your part a unique name that will make it easy to differentiate from other parts. For this example, I'll add an air filter and name it Air Filter Pleated 20 by 20 by 1. Measurements are helpful to differentiate and easily identify parts. Once you've named your part, click Add. It's as simple as that. You've successfully added your first part. Now that we've created our first part, let's add some more details. Limble offers part number, price, location, and quantity as default fields, so I'll fill those in. Limble is a truly customizable software that allows you to add custom fields to track almost any information you can think of. For my air filter, I'll want to add the product rating. To add custom fields, click on the part name. You'll be taken to the part card. Select Add Field. In the new pop-up, make sure Create New Field is selected. I'll name it Rating. Next, we'll need to decide what type of information this is. For the rating, I'll want to use the text type. Then, click Create and populate the field with the information. Now we have a custom field. The last thing I'll do in the part card is upload a photo. This is another way to help differentiate your parts. To do that, I'll click on the photo icon and upload. And that's it. We've successfully added a part with a lot of great information we can use moving forward. As you're setting up your parts inventory in Limble, you may need similar parts that share a lot of the same information. This is where copying an existing part will save you time. To do this, select Add Part. Instead of creating a blank part, I'll make sure to select a copy of an existing part. Now I'll have the option to choose from all of my parts. If you have more than one location on your account, you can pull information from any of them to create your new part. To get the one I want, I'll search for air filter and select air filter pleated 20 by 20 by one and update the name to be air filter pleated 20 by 20 by two instead of the copy. Then I'll click add. You can also do this by hovering over the part and selecting the duplicate button. Now that we've added some parts to our inventory, we'll want to create reorder limits and set reminders in Limble so we can keep our inventory stocked. To do that, I'm going to enter the part card and find the settings by clicking on the cog icon. The new window shows me my threshold counts. I can change these numbers to determine how many or how little parts I want at any given time. By default, Limble sets these numbers at negative one. This basically means you won't receive any reminders about restocking your inventory. There are three types of thresholds here. The minimum threshold determines how low your inventory can get before you'll be reminded to reorder parts. So for this example, I'm going to say I want to have at least 12 of these air filters on hand, and if my inventory gets any lower than that, I'll receive a reminder to reorder more of them. Next is the maximum threshold, which tells us how many of the parts to be ordering when it's time to restock. Let's say 30 here. The last one is the stale threshold. Using the stale threshold will send you a reminder if a part isn't used after a certain number of days. So if I set this for 365 and I don't use any of my inventory for a year, I'll receive a reminder in a year that this part has not been used at all. This is great for parts that you don't use very often and maybe you're on the fence about keeping. I can also assign threshold tasks to a specific user or team. So I'm going to assign this to Cheddar, who's our parts manager. Let's talk about adding parts to tasks. I'm going to use my mobile device for this. I'm going to open a work order that just came in. It says I need to replace a filter in an HVAC unit. When I open the work order, I'll navigate to the green plus button. From the new list of icons, I'll select the cog icon to add a part. There are three ways I can find the part I need. I can search for it by using the search bar or scrolling through my list. I can view associated parts here from the view associated parts button or I can scan the appropriate QR code. If I scan the QR code, it's going to turn on my camera so I can scan the QR code. 
From there, I would just get the view of the QR code in the camera and it would add the correct part to the task automatically. On the inventory side, we'll see that one part is reserved for this task. Now I'll complete the task. The part card has a ton of easily accessible information about associated vendors, assets, work history, and more. Let's take a look at what you can find in the part card. The vendors tab is where you'll find associated vendors who have sold you your part. You can track unique part numbers and prices for each of those vendors here. The assets tab shows you which assets are associated with this part. If you use a part on a task, the asset will automatically show here as you can see from the work order we just completed. You can manually associate them here as well. The log tab shows you all activity that has happened to the part. You can view the log and add records as well. The final tab is the reports tab. This shows important statistics related to the part. You can filter this information by a date range and export the information for reporting. Now that you have a lay of the land, let's take a look at all of this on mobile. We keep things as similar as possible between the desktop and mobile app for the most seamless experience. Log into the Limble app on your mobile device or tablet. Scroll down to the search header and select Part. From the new pop-up window, select the Create Part button. As we did on desktop, we'll name the part. Let's pretend this is another air filter. In this window, I'll add the name, number, price, and starting quantity. Also, be sure to include the right location if you have more than one. Once you've filled that out, hit Create. We're at the part card again and have the same functionalities we did in the desktop app. I'll add a new custom field for the part material by selecting add field and make sure to select create new field. I'll name it material and use the text category for my information type. I'll populate the field with the material type and then exit the part card. Now I can look up my part and see that it's there with the other parts we've created at that location. If you go into the part card, you'll notice that all of the same tabs are available to view, and I can access the quantity thresholds to handle inventory on the go. Thanks so much for watching.